Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, we will be talking about decomposition. That is the process of decomposition. Also, we will be dealing with some of the MCQs in between. So watch the video till the end. And also the PDF of the slides is available in the description box. So you can check that out as well. So let's get started. So first of all, we'll look at the definition of decomposition. So the definition says the breakdown of organic matter into simpler organic substances. So basically, we are converting some complex organic matters into simpler inorganic substances and the process of breakdown is known as decomposition, right? So let's move ahead. So now we'll see what are the steps involved in decomposition process. So basically there are five major steps in decomposition. What are they? They are fragmentation, leaching, catabolism, humification and last is mineralization. So you need to remember all of the steps uh, one by one, like which is the first, which is after it, which is after that, because these uh, this can be asked in the question that what is the step after this step, right? So from this slide, you just need to take away that there are five major steps of decomposition and the names are so and so. So now let us look at the first step that is fragmentation. So what does it mean? Fragmentation means the breakdown of detritus into smaller pieces by the detrivores. So what are detrivores? The organisms that are helping in de uh, decomposition process are known as detrivores that are helping in conversion of organic matter into inorganic simpler substances. So what is detritus? Detritus may be the drier leaves or the peels of some fruits or dry flowers or anything that is organic that is present around you also this is not the full decomposition process this is just they are converting it into smaller pieces right next step is leaching so the next step is leaching and what does leaching mean fragmented particles may contain a lot of water soluble nutrients right they may contain a lot of water soluble nutrients which are inorganic in nature so this is what we have done is we have converted the organic matter into inorganic substances up to some amount that are water soluble now what happens to them is these nutrients gets dissolved in water and seep into the soil and this process is known as leaching that is seeping of the nutrients that are dissolved in water of them into the soil that is they go uh, deep under the soil so this is known as leaching this is the second step now this third step is so the next step is catabolism we basically understand by catabolism is that the complex matter is converted into simpler substances right so here what catabolism means is extracellular enzymes the enzymes that are present outside the cell right they are known as extracellular released by bacteria so these are released by the bacteria and fungi carry out enzymatic conversion of the decomposing detritus the detritus which is already decomposing which is in the process of decomposition is uh, what happens to them is the bacteria and fungi are releasing the extracellular enzymes on them and enzymatic conversion of the decomposing detritus to simpler compounds and inorganic substances right so they are being converted into simpler substances and inorganic substances so how does catabolism look like is this way it looks right there is a compound a complex compound which is in the presence of enzymes being converted into simpler inorganic substances so the next step will be humification so by the term itself we understand that it is the formation of humus so what is humus a dark colored amorphous substance is formed and accumulated which is called as humus so in this step what happens is a dark colored amorphous substance is being formed and is being accumulated in the soil which is known as humus so humus have some uh, beautiful properties which we will see here so the first property is it is highly resistant to microbial action and the second property is humus undergoes quite slow decomposition and hence serves as a reservoir of nutrients so humus contains a lot of nutrients and it is very slowly decomposing so hence it is it acts as a reservoir of nutrients that is it contains a lot of nutrients into it and hence it helps in the growth of plants it is releasing it into the soil very slowly which is very essential for the plants 
so the last step is mineralization as we can easily understand that is it is release of the minerals into the soil so the definition says a process which results in the release of inorganic substances and nutrients the nutrients that are required by the plants for the process of photosynthesis right they are using it so these nutrients and the inorganic substances are released into the soil finally so here i would like to mention that mineralization and the last two processes that is catabolism as well as the humification occur simultaneously there is uh, there is no such thing like they are occurring one after the other but we read them like this but all of these three are occurring at the same time almost at the same time right so here we have a multiple choice question so question says which of the following is not a decomposer so we need to understand here not a decomposer is being asked so the options are fungi bacteria both a and b and none of the above so uh, from the past slides we have seen that the fungi and bacteria are releasing the extracellular enzymes we have read that right so these are two are not an option for us uh, to answer this question they both are decomposers both a and b is also incorrect so the right answer will be none of the above so we'll see what are uh, the examples of decomposers in the next slide so the major examples are all the fungi then bacteria and also the earth worms and millipedes so uh, here we can see the pictures of uh, the fungi that is mushroom and bacteria and also the millipede right so you need to remember these examples the mcq may be asked from this portion as well and the answer is d that is none of the above next multiple choice question says in which of the following conditions so some conditions are uh, given in the options which of the following conditions decomposition will be faster so in which condition the decomposition will be faster let's see the conditions low humidity and low temperature low humidity and high temperature high humidity and low temperature and high humidity and high temperature so what might be the answer i hope you have uh, guess the guess your answer so let's discuss about the factors that affect the conditions so the right answer is d that is high humidity and high temperature now we'll discuss about some of the factors that affect the uh, decomposition first is temperature so we have already seen that higher temperature will uh, result in higher decomposition right next is moisture if there is more moisture if there is more uh, moisture present in the environment so what will happen is the uh, decomposition will be faster right and also this is also a factor that is presence of lignin and chitin in detritus if there is presence of lignin that is a very complex substance also chitin is a very complex substance if it is present in the detritus then the decomposition will be slower so this is required the high temperature is required moisture the high moisture is required also the presence of lignin and chitin should be lesser in the detritus then only the decomposition will be faster if there is more nitrogen present in the detritus then also the decomposition will be faster so i hope you have understood the topic really well if you like the content please hit the like button also comment uh, in the comment section if you have any questions also you can uh, tell me about how the video was and you can share it with your friends whoever are preparing for competitive examination because this topic is important in almost all the competitive exams and for more such informative videos you can subscribe to my channel as well so thank you so much